Hello, everyone. I lost my mouse for a moment. Uh, welcome to the basement where things are um, always slightly broken, but you don't come here for perfection. Uh, I'm Mara. I'm joined not. as always by Trevor. Yes. If, if you want perfection, then I, I don't know where you, where would you go for perfection? I don't, I don't, where, where would be the place to go? I, I don't know. Let's put a pin in that. <laughs> all right. Dead air, everybody. You don't come here for perfection. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, this was this oh, is this is gonna be a low, low key show. Um, not really any new movies. Like, yes, Jackass Forever and Moonfall came out. Um, I didn't see either of them, and I don't know if I plan on seeing either of them because none of them look appealing to me. <laughs> um, so I, we'll see. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll do. We're just gonna do some games. We're gonna see if I know things Buddy. that oh, I cat, probably cat, won't. Cat, cat cat oh no what okay oh i thought he made the window go away and i thought that i'd just crash the show but it's fine <gasps> we're good come here, come here. don't come here for perfection everybody um come on come here sorry this is just we're having problems this is this is the most perfect intro to a basement show ever Hi, this buddy. is this encapsulates what our show is we're in episode 23 Wow. I know, right? Can you believe it? That feels like a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. So what we'll be doing some of that. We're gonna we're gonna do more AI writer because yep. that, <laughs> that was they're that was just fun. so good. I mean, yeah, we, we love our army hammer, Witty Allen uh <laughs> movie plus Evangeline, you know. Um and then also we will be announcing more nominees for the basement awards. Um, because like award season's in the swing, we're in the swing of it. Oscar nominations come out on Tuesday. Uh, I am very excited it's about be it. Crazy. I'm, I'm going to be yelling a lot. Um, I did. Yeah. I, uh, Nick 23, it's older than me. Okay. So it feels like a lot. Um, yeah, I, BAFTA nominations were insane. I, I, I don't know how many of you care about awards, but I screamed a lot and I punched my camera at one point. That was the thing that happened. Ooh. I, uh. I, I'm going to, I'll show you the clip, Mara, afterwards. It's, it's, it kind, so I go out violence. of control. I know. It was an excited punch. I was excited about something. My arms were flailing all around, and then I just smacked it. Yeah. Just punched the microphone there. Um, But yeah, what, what do we want to kick off with? Well, um, since things are just the way they are right now, um, yeah. why don't I talk a little bit? I did see Moonfall uh, after okay. some sh some stuff. Uh, it took a lot to be able to go see Moonfall. Um, and then I did see Jackass Forever. Okay, so spoiler free. <laughs> um, not that Moonfall is, you know, something that really is important to not spoil, but whatever. Um, it's something. It kind of had it. me periodically. Right. And then it lost me real big time <laughs> at the end. <laughs> But it has some really funny lines, like some of the dumbest stuff I've ever heard said as like serious dialogue in a movie. So it was definitely worth it for those moments. Um, how, plus, how when is it not visual... uh, fun to look at Halle Berry like seriously? Okay, that's that's fair. I okay. How did the visuals look? Because in the trailer, the visuals looked terrible to me. Like it looked like horribly lit. It looked okay. 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 It wasn't exceptional, but it wasn't it wasn't bad. Okay, okay. Because, yeah, that was, like, one of the biggest, like, it was, like, it, you're, you're in space and this is how you're going to shoot it. It didn't, it didn't, didn't look great. Um, but, okay, I, I, I still probably won't go see it. I, it's not that important to Wait for it streaming. <laughs> yeah, no, that definitely. Like, I just, I, I don't know. I don't understand why people are surprised that it's bad. Like, it's a Roland Emmerich movie. I feel like we should be used to this by now. I don't. Well, it's funny because, oh, oh cat. Um, from a physics standpoint, they actually introduced some really interesting uh, physics concepts. And so the scientist part of me, it was kind of like Interstellar, except I was not say nearly as scientifically accurate. But like a movie that actually does explore some real science and then obviously goes to some really not real science. But where the the that part of my brain can be kind of stimulated and I can say, oh, I love that we're talking about this. Let's talk about this more. Science. Um, but yeah, both of them lost me at the end, so they got that. Yeah, it's a, 
it sounds very much like interstellar I like everything you're saying is just like interstellar you know um yeah brennan <laughs> brennan loves brennan loves awards i you know awards are they're they're the best you know i i'm gonna de sorry for derailing that but yeah moonfall is <laughs> right i don't know hey, bud. We'll, 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 we'll see if i yeah. I mean, we have like um, AMC A list, and we have another um, Cinemark plan thing. Yep. So since uh, I didn't have to per se pay for it, of course I was going to see it. Uh, and yep. and Dan has to review it, but man, we're still in that, a lot of that has snow. like Netflix movie written all over it. Yeah, we're still in a lot of snow here. Like it's it's a struggle. Like I know you guys got quite a bit of snow as well. Um, just enough massive. snow to completely cripple the entire state. Um, so really yeah. not that much. <laughs> okay. I mean, to be fair, it's Arkansas. You guys aren't used to the snow, you know. Um, like, isn't are, are the snow numbers, like, pretty low usually for Arkansas? Or, oh, yeah. You know? No, like, it, it'll okay. get, like, a dusting, but it'll melt, like, that day or the next day. And uh, usually yeah. it's the ice that's the problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 snow and moonfall and yeah what is this I... <laughs> yeah the uh, outer space <laughs> stuff also had a lot of gravity in it as well okay okay yeah Negative it was almost like degrees. i mean i actually didn't watch dan make his review but we talked about this the second that we finished the movie it's like 2012 prometheus terminator and gravity had a baby and that baby was kind of ugly a little that sounds awful like that sounds disgusting that 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 doesn't feel okay okay uh so he's getting nominated but spielberg's missing for Isuki hamaguchi i'm going live tomorrow morning on my channel doing final oscars predictions so subtle plug but yeah no denise denise probably in um spielberg's missing though everybody it's it's gonna happen um moving on jackass forever Okay. Okay. I watched the first three of them. I had seen the first one when it came out, uh, but I had never rewatched it and I hadn't seen the second two at all. And I really didn't remember a lot about the first one. And don't get me wrong. Like there's some nasty, like really just disgusting and kind of unnecessary uh, visual gags and stuff that are done and pranks. Um, they definitely don't have any of that in this new one. And I very much appreciated it. Uh, <laughs> I cannot say it any other way, but like the movie was pure joy. Like I was happy every single moment I was there. Every single person was just like dying, laughing, groaning, squeaking, squealing, slightly shouting. Um, and it's it was such a visceral experience because it's not like like you're not really feeling disgust at any point. Because I know in the others, like there yeah. were points where I was like, I'm just disgusted by this, and that's not the response I want right now. I want to laugh at you guys just being stupid um, and abusing your bodies for entertainment. And there wasn't anything like that. Like there was anxiety and there was excitement and just awe at some of the stunts that they pull off successfully. Um, yeah, it it was so, so much fun. I had so much fun. And I told Dan, okay. I was like, we have to buy this the second it comes out because I want to watch it again. It's at, it's at like a 4.0 on Letterboxd. Like it's doing like, it's getting like really, really good ratings. It's Rotten Tomatoes is very high. Like I... I, I I don't know. I like it. None of the trailers looked appealing to me in any way. That none of the previous films have ever looked appealing to me in any way. But I I don't know. It's getting like very very good reviews. Part of what I appreciate about it is the athleticism of a lot of the stuff that they do, um, and kind of the creativity with some of the stuff that they do. Um, but like, you know, the bits that involve like bodily fluids uh, or solids uh, are not my speed. And I feel like are shocking for the sake of being disgusting and shocking. And they don't have and like it toned down from, you know, a 99 to like a three in, in this one. So it was okay. so much more enjoyable because I didn't have to be like, I don't really want to see somebody's poop. You know, it's fair. <laughs> oh, also, <laughs> they have they have a, a, a kaiju. And that's all I'm going to say about it. I never thought I'd enjoy seeing what I saw as much as I did see it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I can't say anymore. There's just, there's a kaiju in it. That's all I'm saying. Okay. That's, that's fair. 
Uh, <laughs> I just had such a good time. <laughs> okay. But I was really butthurt, though, because we were supposed to see it on preview night, and it had, like, 30 minutes of bonus footage that was only eligible on preview night until we, you know, get the disc. I'm sure it'll be on the disc. But the the, the ice storm happened, and everything here closed because, you know, people can't, can't handle it. And I was so yeah. upset because I wanted 30 more minutes of it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I just I, am really happy about it. It made me feel so happy. <laughs> I laughed so much. And like those laughs where you're like, oh, my diaphragm hurts. I got my ab workout today at the theater. Like those kinds of laughs. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. I'll see. I'll, 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 I'll consider checking it out. If you check out any of them, do this one because it, I think that okay. the disgusting gags would also not really be, you would just turn it off. And this one doesn't have a lot of disgusting stuff. It's yeah. I, the, I, if I was going to see it, like I, I was just going to jump in with this one. I wasn't, wasn't planning on when watching any of the previous ones. So yeah. Um, all right. I'd any, like to address uh, this really quick. Um, those were people that were um, operating a nuclear reactor and serving their countries. And the worst thing that that could happen is that they had to pee in a bottle out of necessity. Sure, that's totally fine for me. There's nothing that's necessary about watching some guy have diarrhea on camera. There's nothing necessary about that. It's not in the service of anything else doing something critically important. So, yes, I, I defend that completely. So, yeah. Anyways, moving on. Um. Yeah, what do we what do we want to move on to next? Ooh, um, have, how ooh, about okay. dealer's choice? Okay. Did you see did you see Troy Kotzer's reaction to getting a BAFTA nomination? No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, I would highly encourage you to look that up and pull it up on Twitter and share your screen because it's delightful. Can I do that? Are we allowed to do that? I don't see why not. Okay. I mean, we don't monetize like with ads, yeah. so I don't see why we couldn't. Um, I also don't think a five-second Twitter video would be copyrighted. True. Regardless. Anyways, yeah. Um, <coughs> what what do we me. want to do next? So, yeah, we could do... We, we have... Does Trevor know about this? Um, we have... What else do we have? We have AI writer. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's so cute! It is. Okay. Did you want to share your screen? Yeah, hold on. So Troy Kotzer in the film Coda is nominated for a BAFTA. Um, and he just seems like a delightful person. I've been watching interviews with him and he's just like he just he seems so delightful. And just All right, I'm great... gonna um it's gonna come up in a second. Okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's great love it i could watch that over and over again i i, I most definitely did <laughs> anyways oh, just wonderful. wanted to share that with everybody uh anytime anybody says the words don't matter just show them that clip because yeah is he's 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 wonderful and like the awards awards bring joy to performers it's it's cool um all right uh well, do we want to throw out a goal if we hit 10 we, all, we can tease with one ai writer and if we hit ten dollars then we'll do more that sounds like a good idea i feel like that's fair do we want to do ai writer right now let's okay here is our thing input it okay here's what we got okay um we are in 1930s Hollywood, a okay. teenage runaway. Uh, okay, so this this teenager is arguing about, like, I, I think this is supposed to be politics, like with his parents, and he runs away and then ends up in jail. So then he makes, he becomes friends with a famous actress who is in jail for, like, driving and drinking. <laughs> and then she gets that like she gets him out of jail and brings him to MGM. <laughs> um and then the, and they're in need of young talent 
and then they quickly be like gain a life of fame and then the kid is overwhelmed and then runs away from MGM. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> that's a lot that's a lot of of movie um okay what came to mind is renee zellweger as the actress okay that's just good and things we can consider more um why does th- this just seems like 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 liquor's pizza but on like drugs <laughs> well i think if we want to even though i know it says a kid i feel like we should just age up our uh our male characters <laughs> to be appropriate yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um Nick says Patty Jenkins as director. I mean, I will say this. We definitely have to age up the uh, the younger character in that case because I'm not going to give her a second opportunity to um, do something yeah. appropriate with two characters sexually. So, yep. yeah. Our character is now 18. Um, <laughs> to be fair, like, uh, that, that could be implied by kid. You know, we could we could have made that work. Um, yeah, so our character is 18. Uh, who's playing the kid? Um, hmm. <laughs> Nick says so. Paul Thomas Anderson is director. Um, yeah, I. <laughs> uh, okay, who's playing their? Yeah. Okay, speaking we if we're gonna age up people, um, just just the Woody Norman, just old <laughs> Woody sure. Norman can be. Old. Um, <laughs> I don't think that works. Plus, he's used to being filmed in black and white, so it works. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, a critics group gave him a lifetime achievement and award, so clearly he's old. Um, I love that. Yes. Uh, Simon says it's a Step Brothers prequel. John C. Riley, Maggie Smith is the actress. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. <laughs> um, this is kind of this is kind of difficult. Um, what are we thinking for the actress? So, like, we're thinking this actress is like kind of like a mess. Let's just hire Lindsay Uh-oh. Lohan. <laughs> I'm not wrong. I <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um man. This is okay. I'm gonna throw this out here. She would she would do a lot. How do we feel about Lady Gaga as the actress? I think that could work. I um, think that could work. Plus, I mean, she's definitely had some acting lessons. She could she could really just like straight up nail this. Like 10 out of 10 nail it. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I like Lady Gaga in this. Like, I haven't been the biggest fan of her past roles, but I feel like she fits for this. Um I like it. I think that was a a, a plus choice there. Okay, I should just be a casting director. Um, okay, so Lady Gaga. Do it. Um, You're one of the most important people in the industry then. You could be the next Nina yeah. Gold. Yeah, nice pull. Um, okay, so then who is our who's our kid? Oh, okay, well, I was going to say my boy Timmy, but I don't think that makes sense. I feel like the ages are too close. Mm. Um, who's like, I'm just going to Google young actors. Yeah, I know. Let's see what right? we get here. Um, do I know who Tila Tequila is? No, I do not. <laughs> Should I? No, not really. <laughs> okay. Um, ooh, okay. Lucas Hedges. I thought about him actually. He was one of the first people I thought of. <laughs> Simon says Jared Leto as a teenager in full Mario. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Um, okay. Uh, okay. I would say Finn Wolfhard until I decided I hated him. Um. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I kind of like Lucas Hedges. I can be down for that, for sure. I, like, Lucas Hedges with Lady Gaga. I, I don't know. I think it works. Before, before we pick our director, we do have a stream lab from Brendan. Yes. Um. Brendan says, people who know me well know that I can talk about the Oscars in the same way some people can talk about sports. I could go on and on listing past winners and throw out my predictions for the nominees. I drive people crazy, lol. Uh, yeah, I do I do a very similar thing. I, I also drive people crazy by talking about the Oscars all the time. 
Um, that's why I've created a podcast, subtle plug. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I just, I, I love the Oscars. I love all the statistics um, behind it. Uh, I just, I, I, I love statistical analysis uh, in general and like being able to apply that to film. It was like, oh, all the things. Um, so yeah, it's fun. Okay. I, um, I was, there was a moment where I didn't hate Finn Wolford. Yes. Before I saw him in the movie. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. I Googled young male actors. Um, and the third thing is, um, who is the cutest guy actor? What does so what does the in. consensus say? <laughs> Number one is Jamie Dornan. I mean, he he's not an ugly man. No, but for number and he one, has an accent, which American women tend to find to be exotic. Okay, just a, just a second. We got to go down to this list. We're going to okay. sidetrack here. Number two is Idris Elba. I agree. Uh, accurate. One hundred percent. He should be number one. Number three, Henry Cavill. Accurate. I don't know how I, f I don't know how I feel about him this high. I would say he's definitely top. Ten. I don't know about number three. I think his number personality four. helps a lot because I love that he's just a That's huge true. nerd and a dork, and that he's so humble, and that he cooks things, and I think has a cat. I he's just it seems like he's a very interesting dude. That's not like a meathead, and I appreciate that. Um, people in the chat are throwing out just D H and Mark Hamill. Um, I'm not going to talk about that. Brennan said Jacob Tremblay. I don't know if he's quite old enough yet. I think he is, how actually. Old is, how, old, how old is Jacob Tremblay? I mean, he's phenomenal in, like, Room. Um, not The Room. He's also phenomenal um, in um, Doctor Sleep. Like, yeah, when you have a role that okay, small, that's why you get Jacob Tremblay. He's 15. Also Wonder. Okay. He's very good in Wonder. Yeah, he's 15. Yes. That movie could have been a train wreck, but it ended up being actually very sweet. It was very good. Uh, same director as Dear Evan Hansen. Mm. Um, number four, me back there, Trevor. Okay. number four is David Beckham. Is he an actor? No, he's a soccer player. Well, a footballer, as yeah. they would call him. I, I mean, I know. Yes, I know that he's a, a footballer. I, I was just asking, like, has he been in it? Like, he's been in some things. I wouldn't call him an actor, though. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, either. Although, five, honestly, I, footballers are some of the best actors ever. How do you think they get those yellow cards <laughs> thrown out there? That. Um, I've, I've actually gotten, uh, I've fun story. Okay. So I, I played soccer for a while. Now I ref, um, I actually, uh, I won a penalty kick by flopping pretty solid actor, uh, right in front of the other team's bench. They were not happy about it. It was tie game, uh, last, last five minutes of it, um, pretended that I got kicked in the back of the ankle right in front of the other team's bench, uh, won a penalty kick, took the penalty kick, scored it. We won the game. Um, this is a side of you I have not seen before in okay. in the year I, plus that I've known you. This is shocking. I, I would uh, very consistently try to take advantage of the rules as much as I could. Um, if the, if the game, if, if it was, well, because like, that's why I, uh, I, I ref because like I was obsessed with the rules of soccer. Um, so I would try to take it. So like, for instance, the clock doesn't stop in soccer, right? Uh, yep. And you can't bring in a new game ball without it being approved by the referee. So if it was like late in the game, like two to three minutes left and I had the ball, I would just launch the ball as far away from the field as I possibly could. And then so that way the other team would have to take time off of the clock running and going and getting the ball and bringing it back. Or <laughs> they would have to grab a new ball and then we'd waste a couple minutes uh, having to get it approved by the ref. Normally there would be added time at the end of it. But if it was a tournament, uh, games are scheduled back to back to back to back and there's no added time. So if we're leading in the tournament, you can waste a solid three to four minutes off the clock. I, that's, it, it wasn't the nicest thing. It's it's not, you know, it's it's called gamesmanship. I wouldn't call it bad sportsmanship. Uh, it's just called being smart and taking advantage of the game. So I did that quite frequently. I wasn't very popular with other teams, but you know. Um, <laughs> uh, back to the sexiest actors alive, uh, according to um, iHeartRadio. <laughs> Uh, number five is Ryan Gosling. Yeah, the baby goose is, is a, an attractive gentleman. By the way, Dan, would you like to get in on this conversation or do you want to wait? Okay, he wants to wait. Okay, anyways, okay. continue. Okay. Number six, Ryan Reynolds. 
Yeah, I mean, he's especially okay. the charisma factor. I think that that's a lot of yeah. it. Number seven Bradley? is Bradley Cooper. Depends on I, the role. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, love love him as the raccoon. I don't know about anything else. Um, okay, number eight, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. I can get behind yeah. that. Number nine, Robert Pattinson. Yeah. Yeah. I like the thing. Just not any sparkly. Um, number 10 is Farrell Williams. I do not know who this is. Oh, um, yeah, I can see that. Okay. Man, number who would have been your number 10? If he, if he, especially since you don't know who he is. Uh, ooh, well, I mean, Timmy's not on this list. So like, I knew you were going to say Timmy. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ben says that I was the bait, <laughs> the Ben Bateman of, of soccer. You could, you could, one might say that. Number 11 is Tom Hardy. I don't see that. Oh, I totally see that. Uh, um, number 12, Hugh Jackman. Uh, number yeah. I mean, so talented. Yeah. Thir 13, Zach Efron. 14, George Clooney. He's old. So? <laughs> so I don't, uh, as of now, he would not be cracking my top 25 at all. He's uh, aging very well. Is Timothy Chalamet even on this list? One second. Probably not. No, Orlando Bloom is on here. I really um, prefer him as Legolas, but yeah. Okay, no Timothy Chalamet and no Michael B. Jordan on this list. This list is wrong. Ooh, yeah, I don't agree with that. I This list is objectively wrong if it's missing both of them. Hi. Um, anyways, we got sidetracked. Oh, yeah, who's, who's directing our Lucas Hedges Lady Gaga thing? Um, oh, I thought you uh, someone said Patty Jenkins and you liked that. Yeah, I'd be good with that. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Brendan says because Ziegler didn't get nominated for a SAG, uh, will she be nominated for an Oscar? Um, no, I don't think Ziegler happens. I think that we have a solid four in actress being Lady Gaga, that is the front runner, Coleman and Kidman. And then I have Alana Haim getting in at the four. I don't know what that fifth slot is. As of now, um, I'm probably going Jessica Chastain, but I could definitely, like, Ziegler could get in, but I also think that there's a lot of passion behind her, not Reinsva right now as well. I, I really don't know what that fifth slot, it could be Ziegler, but I think she's in contention with a lot of other people. Like, I could see Tessa Thompson surprising. Jennifer Hudson could still randomly happen. Uh, Kristen Stewart, obviously, is still there. So I know I feel good about my four as Haim, Coleman, Kidman, and Lady Gaga, and then I have no clue about that fifth slot. Um, no, Jennifer, jo Joseph Gordon-Levitt wasn't even on the list. That this is a very flawed list. Um, all right, what do we want to move on to? All right, well I have I'll Dan in the background here, and he would like to ask you several questions. Do you know this? Okay. So I'm going to bring in Dan. I have some questions I want to ask you. I don't want to mention it immediately. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. yes. <clears throat> okay. So, Trevor, yeah. I've enjoyed playing this game before where mm -hmm. I ask you various things for, that I know to see if you are aware of them. Have they transcended the generations? And so Mara and I have generated another list. So okay. this is another round of does Trevor know? We have to make I like that. Like another round for it. Hi. All right. Ready? I, okay. I, I shook it up a little, a little bit this time too. The, the, the questions, some of them are a little bit different than just like, do you remember this? Um, uh -huh. Let's see here. Let me get my list. All right. So. Do I remember? At the turn of the century. At the turn of the century, there were a famous series of advertisements. Okay. With a bunch of guys on the phone talking to each other and saying, was up? Are you familiar with that at all? Okay, I feel like I've heard "was up." Before. Like I feel like I've heard that. Okay. Before. Do you know, know or do you have a guess as to what product those advertisements were originally for? There we go. Now that is as parodied in the scary movie series. But it yep. came from an original series of advertisements. Very popular. Okay. So the advertisements were for... 
<laughs> the first, the the first, what is that? Um, the first thing that came to mind was Clorox, which is wrong. So let's go. <laughs> let's you can tell what kind of world we live in when the first product he thinks of is instantaneously a cleaning product. Clorox. Let's go with Lunchables. <laughs> Well, you could technically have it with Lunchables. These were originally advertisements for Budweiser. Budweiser beer. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Very, oh, very nice. We drove our parents crazy with that. Uh, in the okay. It went around for a while. It did go around for a while. Okay. Um, so these were these were products. I'm curious. I, I Things come in cycles. So maybe these came back around for your generation. I don't know. Would Some you of them know? did, I know. Would you know what I was speaking of if I said that I collected pogs growing up? No, I feel like pog has a very different meaning now. It, it um, may. I don't. I have. I know one meaning of the word pog. Like pog now in like general vernacular means play of the game for like video games. Oh, okay. um, like pog. Um. I how is this spelled? Uh, it's technically a it, it's spelled P O G. It's technically a uh, what is that thing called, Mara? Like SWAT, where it's uh, a word made of abbreviations oh. and acronym. Is it is it piece of gum? It is uh, not piece of gum. <laughs> no. The funny thing is, gum was almost an option on this. I, I pitched gum as one of these options, but we decided no. against it. This is Wait, how do you low. Think I don't know what gum is. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is how lo-fi that we were uh back in the good old days trevor pogs were little cardboard discs that you would collect that had pictures on them and then you would stack them and you had a bigger rubber thing well they the came slammer. in all it's called a slammer and you would slam the the slammer on your stack of pogs and then depending on how they landed you would get to keep them um yeah, so there are little cardboard oh, wow. discs that you would stack up like okay. coins and then you'd slam them with a slammer. I feel like that's like the concept for a mobile game now. Like that would be a thing like you collect, like they would license out different like brands and then like you try and collect them. And then I mean, you'd have to pay like $20 for each one. <laughs> pogs may very well have be an app now. I think I had those Simpsons Pogs. What's, but yeah, what's, we, what's the acronym for? It's like papaya, orange, grapefruit. It, it, I, I, as we were told, it, it started in Hawaii, I believe, or in the tropical islands. And it was like a, a they used to be uh, juice bottle caps. And so it was called Pog because those were three different kinds of juice that you would, they oh, would okay. take the bottle caps off of and, and stack and play with. And then it kind of became a, a fad, I guess you would call it for a while. So yeah, Pogs. Um, that's literally, we played with discs of cardboard. <laughs> That's how yep. bored you. All right. Okay. So we're oh, over okay. to so far. Brennan, oh, go ahead. Brennan asked about Y2K. I've heard of the that string of things, Y2K. I, I've never known what it meant. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, this is we're oh, we're gonna Y2K. turn this into a little all right, Trevor. Here's here's what this means. <laughs> the Y2K was when they first programmed computers, when they were writing the code for them un, for the year. They would only code it as the like like 85, 87, because it was new. Computer coding was new, oh, and they didn't think that you would have to code computers for the for the new century. And so there was a whole thing yeah. that they said that when the computers rolled over from 1999 to oh, 2000, okay. that they'd all stop working because they wouldn't know how to read. And so there was like millions of dollars. There was a whole industry that was devoted to switching computers over. Uh, yeah, Y2K, Y2K conversion was like insanely like lucrative at that time. But people legit thought that like people legitimately bought like food. There were people that thought that the world was going to come literally crashing to a halt because all technology was going to stop working at the stroke of midnight on the year two in the year two thousand. People huh. had bunkers. That's, it was crazy. People were stupid right. back then too. Is really the lesson here, Trevor. I, so basically, humanity is just a dumpster fire. Yeah, more or less. That's not okay. inaccurate. Got it. Uh, really. Maybe not. All right. <laughs> well, we just saw Bart Simpson 
on those uh, pogs. Uh, yes. Bart Simpson, for many years, and other Simpsons cast members, were spokespersons for a particular type of candy. And there was a big campaign around this. Do you know what type of candy Bart Simpson Ooh. would would sell? What time frame am I looking at right here? Uh, what, you're going back into the 90s, early oh, yeah. 90s, right. early to mid 90s, going into probably. I think I think they kept the campaign going maybe to the late 90s, but yeah. Okay. Um. I don't. Okay, I I've I've also confession time. I've never seen a single episode of The Simpsons. Not that this has anything to do with this. Um, I'll, I'll narrow it down for you. It is a candy bar. Would it? Okay. Snickers? That's a good guess. It's a good guess. You know, I, this may, this may be giving away the answer, but I'll, I'll give you the, I'll give you the slogan and I'll just leave out the name of it. it the slogan was nobody, nobody better lay a finger on my blank. Kit Kat, Kit Kat. Okay, good. I, I, right. It's it's Kit Kat bar. Yeah. It is not. No. It is. It is it not is Butterfinger. Nobody better lay a finger on my Butterfinger. Okay, so I. And then remember when they premiered the BBs? Because then they had to redo all of it. Yep. Wait. So what's the kits that? Because I'm, I'm very okay. I'm very illiterate when it comes to like candy because I'm mm-hmm. allergic to most of it. So like I've never like ate most of it. So what's the Kit Kat slogan? That's, give me a break. Give me a break. Break me off oh, a piece okay. of that Kit Kat. Yeah. Okay. So it has a similar like alliterate, like nobody lay a finger on my. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel right. like I, I was kind of warned. But yeah. I just. That that makes sense because yellow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're over three, but that's okay. There's a lot of game left to go. I think that that's expected. I... <laughs> there was a fast food chain, Trevor. Yes. That had ads Donald. featuring the that, that starred the real life owner and founder of the fast food chain. His name was Dave Thomas. Do you know what fast food chain featured ads with founder Dave Thomas? Wendy's. That is correct. It is. Wow. Good Bravo. Job, Did okay. you know that or was that a guess? Yeah, back before he wasn't dead. Um. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I. I. Wendy's. So when I think about someone named Dave, right? And yeah. I think about okay, someone named Dave is making is making a fast food restaurant. He's not gonna call it Dave's. Maybe he True. picks another name. Goes with goes with Wendy's. Uh, fun fact: uh, the only type of thing that I can get from a fast food restaurant is a frosty from Wendy's. Really. That, with, with food allergies, that is the only thing that we have found so far. I mean, to be fair, if you're if you can only like eat one thing from a fast food chain, a frosty is a pretty good. That's one of the top, I would say, five to seven items that you can get from any fast food chain, in my opinion. Well, so, okay, yeah, okay, high yeah. praise, high praise. Yeah, I, I mean, I I enjoy them. I've just started getting them within the past month when you realize, hey, I can actually eat these. But yeah, no, aside from like you know, like water, or like. Like, you know, just like basic stuff. Like, I'm sure I could eat like ketchup, but I'm not going to go into a, a fast food restaurant and like guzzle ketchup. So, like, for an That's actual a thing, I, can, yeah. I, can, <laughs> I mean, I would. I don't know how, how socially <laughs> acceptable that is. I mean, the fabric but. of society is breaking down. So, at this point, <laughs> it really all right, Trevor, you're one for four. I'm on the board. We're I'm almost to the halfway point here. So, okay. Can you tell me? In any context, do you know the name Steve Urkel? Yes, that is from Family Matters. That is correct. Steve Urkel, Jaleel White uh, on Family Matters. Okay, all right. I'm glad to see I, Urkel's transition. I yeah, I know for for Christmas one year, uh, my my parents got uh, myself and Clara a season one of Family Matters on DVD. Nice. That is such an interesting Christmas gift. Your parents you are cool. The, you saw the Genesis <laughs> Urkel then. Yeah, yeah. No, we also... Oh, and before we, we that one kid of like, theirs just disappeared. Yep. We, I, I heard that was the thing. We didn't watch past season one because my parents said it got very weird. Um, Listen, Trevor, he, he, <laughs> he clones himself. 
there's a robot. <laughs> there's a robot Urkel. Uh, there's all kinds of craziness that goes on. Like I've heard, it just becomes like a like the Steve Urkel show rather than like about the family and pretty the, much yeah. the occasional Urkel interactions. Okay, okay, yeah. But no, we watched right. quite a bit of TJF. Like we watched Full House. Um, we've been watching like first, like we watched First Prince Blair. Like we've watched. I I'm, I I know some like '90s TV like Boy Meets World. I, I've seen all yep. of. All I right. know some stuff. Right. So Trevor, we're at the halfway point. We started off slow, but okay. you're on a hot streak now. You've gotten the last two. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> All right. Let's let me ask you. I think you might know this. Do you think he's gonna know this one, Mara? Probably not. I give it a solid maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, are you familiar? And this was a phenomenon. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with the phenomenon known? as the Care Bears. Oh, yeah, I, I know what Care Bears are, yeah. Okay, so Care Bears have, have transitioned. So you have the, the heart, oh, yeah. blood, et cetera. Okay, that's good. I'm yeah, blind. no, we, I, I, I've i definitely touched a Care Bear before. And okay. Did you ask for I'm permission? Not, <laughs> I was gonna say, in a, in a consent, I've touched a Care Bear in a consensual <laughs> manner. Um, <laughs> that's great, okay, good. No, I've seen I think, I think, I think, we had the blue one and the pink one in our house at one point. Yeah. Every, that's the one that everyone had was the blue one and the pink one. Some people had the red <laughs> one too. The hard one. Um, okay, good. So Care Bears have carried over. Um, yeah. All right. All right. This is big for me. You watch TGIF. Maybe, maybe this transitioned over as well. It's Friday nights are for TGIF. On Saturday yeah. nights, the TV channel Nickelodeon oh. had okay. a lineup of shows – called snick stood for saturday night nick okay could you name me any one of the shows that were part of the snick lineup did they have the slime one um they, like they, they did have double dare is it called double dare D they had a double dare was a show on nickelodeon at the time but uh, it was not part of the snick lineup i will snick. say okay. snick uh, leaned very heavily towards scripted programming both live action okay. and animation um okay did nickelodeon did, did they have the rights to ninja turtles at that time they did not have the rights it was a syndicated okay. television show at that time okay okay because uh, they have the rights now, correct? They do, as, as far as I know. At least they have the animation rights, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know about live action. Yeah, um, Paramount. I think it's it's all Viacom. I think has all the different rights. Right. Yeah. Just spread out. Um, yeah. I don't think I can. I don't think I can. All right. Fair enough, Mara. Did I know any? I don't know. Let's see. Uh, Ren and Stimpy. Oh, okay. Rugrat sounds. I've heard of Rugrats. Rugrats. All that. That one starred Keenan Thompson. He was doing sketch comedy when I was a kid, Trevor. <laughs> um, how old is wait, how old is Keenan Thompson? Wait a second. He is older than he looks. I'll tell you that much. I uh, thought that he was like mid twenties, maybe thirty. How old? He's forty three. Well, yeah, he's older than I am. He's older than I am. He 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 had Keenan and Kel and all that. Wait, at, sorry. At point. My mind yeah. is okay. Keenan Thompson. Okay, that's. Have you ever huh. seen the show okay. Are You Afraid of the Dark, Trevor? No, I have. I don't. I've you should look those up. It. Those were like ghost stories. Those were really. Those okay. were actually legitimately scary. Okay. Um, yeah the the only the only one that I've even heard of is Rugrats. Wait, Alex Mack. I feel like I've heard of. Okay. Uh, Clarissa explains it all. Starting Melissa Joan Hart. She was one of my first crushes when I was a kid. So. Oh, nice. Too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I, so yeah, I'm, Snick, Snick did not transition like Care Bears did. That's okay. That's all right. No, it did not. It did not. All right. We got a few more here. Okay. I think this one might have transitioned as well. Okay. Do you know what a Tamagotchi is? The what? A Tamagotchi. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not a trick question. It's, it's Trevor just, is convinced that's a made-up word. I could tell. I, I yeah um is it like gundam <laughs> is it like what oh gundam <laughs> um not quite not quite um so after we got done playing with cardboard discs 
a Tamagotchi was like <laughs> it it was a digital pet. I never had one. It was a digital what? pet. You would have to like feed it, like play with it, and if you didn't, it would die. That is and not it was kept a on a keychain, Trevor. It was teeny. It was like really tiny. <laughs> what is this? What strange world did you live in? Were you? <laughs> This was what technology was, Trevor. Trevor. We didn't have iPhones. We didn't yeah. have Nintendo DSs. We had little <laughs> tiny, uh, little 8-bit uh, pixel pets who uh, you could kill by ignoring them. And yeah, then see, you could just get a new one or play with it again later. At the top, like the, the well, knife and the fork is for food. And then you wait. can play with them and the, turn the sound wait, off. What, and yeah, wait. you could not neglect your Tamagotchi or it would get sad. Wait, but but what? Okay. So, but if it died, would you just like, did you have to buy a new one? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, I think yeah. you could like reset it somehow. I don't know exactly. Yeah, there was some way, I think, with like a, a paperclip, like with yeah. some stuff, I think you could reset it. But yeah, the whole point was there were consequences to its death, except there weren't. Yeah. Right. But if you, but right. So if you could reset it, the lesson is like you could let your pet die and it will just come back. Is that, is that what was being taught? Well, you Clearly. lose all that time and energy you invested into your original one. But yes. Wow, I thought Tamagotchi might have might have transitioned. Well, they came back for a while in the mid two thousands, but he would have been too young to have had one. Yeah, mid two thousands, I was I think. born. Mid two thousand, like yeah, yeah, late two thousands, I was like three. Like I don't. Yeah. I, well, that's Trevor, so in five or ten years, when Tamagotchi comes back around, you'll know what they are now. Yep. It, it, right. it'll be an app. It'll be an app. I mean, like <clears> that. Two more. All right, that's two more. So Okay. I believe in you, Trevor. My mind is blown. My mind is being, my mind is blown. I'm I'm assuming <laughs> that you've heard of the song by Nirvana called Smells Like Teen Spirit. I it sounds kind of familiar. Okay. All right. Well, it was one of the most uh it started the grunge, grunge songs ever in the early 1990s and okay. it was called Smells Like Teen Spirit. Do you know what Teen Spirit is? I, that feels like a very vague question, Dan. Like as a uh, as a physical specific, object, not as a concept. A oh. item. Yeah. Um, um okay. I <laughs> as a physical so this is a physical item, not like yep. something you could sold. purchase it at a store. Actually, Okay, it's a physical item that you can purchase at a store. A Tamagotchi? No. Um, is it? <laughs> um, a car? <laughs> it was not right. a car. It is not uh, a car. I'll give you a hint. It's smaller than a car. Yeah. It's also smaller than a loaf of bread. Yes. Okay, I'll that's a very further. I you would keep it in the bathroom, traditionally. You so would. Okay, so. um, no, uh, wait, wait okay. That's got to read into this as much as I can. Um, Cinefans, just think of smell. Um, teen spirit. What's what's teen? What's teen spirit that's being kept in the bathroom? Um, <laughs> I. That's a sentence. I mean, like, well, yeah, but like, not that you can buy it a store. Well, um. <sighs> I am, I'm, what is, I, should I show him? Yes. I, I don't. So Trevor, Teen Spirit was an underarm deodorant. <laughs> Why though? Marketed to teenagers, specifically, largely to teenage uh, girls. So it smells like Teen Spirit. Yep. Wait, what? Okay. I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. this is yep. so much fun. You could do the same. Thing. I think it's never could do the same okay. thing to me next week. It's it's because <laughs> I would be just as 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 lost in many places. Wait, so Brendan Brendan says is Trevor aware of the air in which uh, my my heart will go on, which is the theme song from Titanic was all over the radio. I am not. Um, I I do know how to play that song on the piano though. Uh, two years ago, so do not ask me to do it. Mm. Imagine but, like uh, when Let life. It Go was on the radio, except worse. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so store. like hell. Yeah, it was inescapable. Yeah. 
for okay. six months straight. You couldn't go anywhere without hearing that song. Okay. All right. Here's the last one. Okay. Oh, I thought we had more than that. No, I think this is the last one. Yeah. I have two left according to Do my you? thing. Cause there was the top one that you skipped. Oh, I skipped the top one. Okay. Oh, and right, you I'm skipped gonna... one in the middle too. Cause there was, Oh, there was the, the Care Bears adjacent one. We can save that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we'll save that one. No, okay. Yeah, we can save that one. But there's two All left. Right. Okay. I'm going to do the one on the top last. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So do you know who or what I'm referring to when I say Stretch Armstrong? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, he's the dude with like, yeah, he, yes. I, I, I can't describe, but yeah, no, he's like, he's like Mr. Fantastic. Um, but that's... then- yeah, there was like a toy, and then yeah, no, that I, is I know correct. This is. Stretch Armstrong was a was a toy. You could stretch yes. his arms and his legs super long. That's all you could do with him. Uh, Mara and I actually we were talking. Both of our parents disallowed us from having Stretch Armstrong toys because they said that <laughs> really we were... because they said we would break it, not because they thought it would cause oh, us any point. damage or harm or it was super expensive. They were worried we would break it. Separately, our parents concocted this fallacy that breaking a toy was a problem that we would have as breaking children with this own, stretchable object. Whose own marketing thing was that he's unbreakable. Yeah. Like that's the whole thing about Stretch Armstrong is you can't break him. We both couldn't have Stretch Armstrong. Okay. Just say, I'm, I'm texting parents to see if they, they were allowed to have a Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> um, uh once you can carry on, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm talking. This is the last but, one. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll narrow this down for you. This was a real life person. <clears throat> okay. Uh, do you know to whom I am referring? If I were to say the name Fabio, he's a mononym. <laughs> Fabio. Um. <laughs> Fabio. <laughs> um. Is that the name? Uh, of anybody in the chat, just say, do you know who Fabio is for real? Um, do Fabio is, I don't, <laughs> Cinefun since he knew people that cut Stretch Armstrongs. Why? Oh, um, since this is not Jared, but oh, okay, that would have been my guess. Um, Fabio, who's Fabio? I, I, Andrew knows who it is. I can't believe it's not better. Wait. Is this like margarine? No, no, Fabio. <laughs> no, is he's person a person. That oh no, is, I'm, I'm he's like a, a spokesperson for I can't believe it's not butter. So, oh, wait. So why was Fabio? That's a very interesting question. Um, have you seen <laughs> the trailer for that Channing Tatum movie, The Lost City, with Sandra Bullock? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You know Channing Tatum's character who's like on the cover of romance novels. Yeah. That character basically is Fabio. Fabio was famous because he was a model. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Fabio was a model. He was on a bunch of romance novel covers and he just became famous. He was this huge celebrity. Only He known was as driving Fabio. women wild. Let's just put it mildly. Wait, there was how? A I don't understand. <laughs> Because apparently he glistened and he had abs and his flowing locks of hair and and oh, his pants would usually be slightly low on his body so you would see his little hip dimples. Yes, and famously I, Fabio I once know. attended the opening of a roller coaster and hit a goose. <laughs> True story. <laughs> He's like a, a hieroglyphic. If you a hieroglyph, if you if you move around, his eyes follow you. Uh, I'm not making that up. Hang on. Let me, uh, he, 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 he was on a roller coaster and the roller coaster, while it was going through one of the loops, hit a goose and Fabio came down from the roller coaster, uh, with a bloodied nose from hitting a goose on the, on the uh, maiden voyage of a roller coaster, I believe in Germany. This I did not know. This is 100% true. <laughs> I'm keeping that in. That's staying in the uh, in the the overlays. I'm keeping that one. <laughs> so now you have this thing 
and you've got this thing. Hey, oh, you got yeah. all, all kinds of not be all next kinds to of each stuff. other. They should not be next to <laughs> like I didn't I, control didn't... this. I it didn't happen. I nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's all i got though i i'm i fabio's fabio's the last one that today. I have. that's it for today but you you were just under 500 that's not too bad that's not too okay. bad yeah we went a little tough too yeah yeah, yeah these were I, not easy I, okay okay um so i just i just looked up something okay so we, I, we'll, we'll see how this works but this is this is um twitch slang and oh gonna, dear boy no um okay so i'll just i'll just read off a couple okay okay so if people are typing f in the chat what does it mean uh <laughs> yeah not to say i'm not gonna say the first thing that came into my brain um Um, I would say they're saying, <laughs> hmm, F, uh, first, first, like first time, like, like it's their first time there. It means that they are paying their respects usually after a tragic event. Oh, that's okay. the letter they chose. <laughs> I guess I was told that you press. Uh, what is it? Uh, I was told that you press uh, X to pay respects uh, on the Xbox or a PlayStation, but I guess uh, F. Okay, F pays respects. All right, fair enough. All right. Uh, if you've been jabated, what does that mean? Jabated? Yes. <laughs> the tables have turned. I have been jabated. Um, yes. If I were to say I, I I've been debated. Um, I would say and Brennan, I, I just a second, Brennan. I do know about the time they killed Chewba Chewbacca with a moon, and I have read that book. You <laughs> <laughs> um, is weird. I would I would I would say I've been duped or tricked. You'd be correct. Debated means that you you're tricked. Wow. Nice. Um, if someone is being kappa, what are they? Kappa. Well, part of me wants to say that there being a uh, an ancient Japanese legend regarding turtles, uh, because I've seen <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three, Turtles in Time. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so I know, like traditionally with the Greek letters, like you can be Alpha and Beta, which are kind of like separate, you know, like opposites. I would say Kappa is like ultimate, like like the best like kappa like yeah so kappa means that you're being sarcastic or lying oh okay all right so that's so it, it can also be used as like a, a verb if somebody's capping that means that mm. they're lying you're lying oh. kappa. okay interesting <coughs> yeah all right um okay <laughs> um so let's see uh are, are you familiar with Pepe the Frog? Unfortunately, yes. I know uh, I know <laughs> Pepe the Frog, yes. Nice, I mean, nice I, I, like, there's been many cycles of Pepe the Frog, like ironic Pepe, like, like, yeah, sadly, yes. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, that that's, that's, I'll, I'll put together a more extensive one later, but that's, that's All the, right. uh, that early thing. But yeah, hey, I that, got that two was of fun. Them. I'll take it. Yeah, 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 there you I, go. Uh, Nick says, God, I don't understand kids today. I, yeah, we're weird. Um, <laughs> kids are all but weird. it doesn't matter when. Yeah. I was weird. You're, everyone's weird when they're kids. That's why we're kids. Yeah, remember, yeah, we played yeah. with little circles made out of cardboard. We were weird. Yeah, we, we, yeah, that's anything that Trevor does is no, there's no weirder than <laughs> us stacking cardboard discs on top of each other and throwing another rubber disc at them. I mean, that's. <laughs> That's pretty crazy too. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Well, this was fun. I had a good time. Thank it you, Dan. Fun. You're welcome. Uh, have have fun. fun. Bye. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, looking at time, we should probably pivot into announcing some more of our awards nice. nominees because we yes. have quite a few to get through. Yeah. We're announcing all the texts. Did we reach our $10? 
We have not yet. Um, we uh, we are okay. halfway there. Okay. So if anybody would like to donate five more dollars, we'll do another another AI writer, do a brand new one. Um, but until then, uh, let's announce some of our technical categories. So the categories we will be announcing today are cinematography, editing, production design, costume design, makeup and hair, uh, sound, visual effects, original score, original song, and soundtrack. I believe that's everything, right? Yes. Boom, 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 right. boom. <sighs> okay. Like I just um, said. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, this is for those who don't know. This is for the Basement Awards we announced uh, our, our fun categories last week. Announcing these. The next week, we'll be announcing the big ones. Picture, director, the four acting categories. Uh, actor, actress, supporting actor, supporting actress, original screenplay, adapted screenplay, and then other directing and acting ones like youth performance, voice performance, breakthrough performance, and the debut director, um, as well as foreign language film. Oh, yeah, we're also uh, announcing animated feature and documentary feature today as well. Um, all right, Mara, would you like to just jump into it? Uh, I, hey, you're you're driving. I uh, we we right. he's done so much work on this that I want to. Uh, this is his baby. I'm just gonna physically construct the kitties, but he I has mean, done you, most of this hard work. I, I mean, aside from you know providing, we we did decide on the nominees together. Oh so. yeah, no, absolutely. I just meant I'm giving you the honor of of announcing the nominees. Well, thank you, thank you. We'll also have best overlooked film next week as well. All right, kicking yes. it off, best documentary. The nominees are. The Sparks Brothers, Summer of Soul, or When the Revolution Could Not Be Televised, Billie Eilish, The World's a Little Blurry, Flea, and The Rescue. Nominees for documentary feature. Yes, clap, 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 clap. Uh, for animated feature, The Mitchells vs. The Machines, Encanto, Flea, Paw Patrol the Movie, and uh the uh, demon slayer uh i was going to try and say the full title but i'm not going to try and pronounce it uh it's a uh, mugen train thank you uh i didn't didn't know the proper way but yes those are nominees for animated um <laughs> okay um <laughs> simon says i have a theory <laughs> uh yeah no luca it was it was cut out one of the last ones to be cut out um, uh, Sam says, I have a theory that they don't have a best craft service award because it would get a bigger cheer than best picture. Probably true. Love it. Um, all right. Best original song. Uh, may we start from Annette. Just look up from don't look up. No time to die from no time to die. Beyond the shore from Coda and on my way from the Mitchells first the machines. Uh, best soundtrack. <laughs> best soundtrack. The nominees are Bo Burnham, Inside, Annette, Last Night in Soho, Tick Tick Boom, and The Suicide Squad. Um, <laughs> best original score. The nominees are Don't Look Up, Zack Snyder's Justice League, The Green Knight, Spencer and Dune. Uh, <laughs> best visual effects. The nominees are Dune, The Green Knight, The Tomorrow War, Spider Man No Way Home, and Eternals. <laughs> it's like our I, weird okay. ASMR clapping so that way it's just <laughs> for people's ears. <laughs> um, best sound. A Quiet Place Part 2, The Tragedy of Macbeth, Godzilla vs. Kong, The Last Duel, and Dune. This is ASMR. Um, we should have a weird ASMR episode for no reason at all. We should have a weird ASMR episode for no reason at all. Um, <laughs> okay, best uh, makeup and hair. We did get a Streamlab, and I will address it once we're done announcing the nominees. Best makeup and hairstyling, Titan, Spencer, The Suicide <laughs> Squad, um, The Eyes of Tammy Faye, and House of Gucci. We did at least have to acknowledge House of Gucci for something. This is ASMR. 
ASMR with Trevor. All right. I almost, um, just as a joke, though, almost put Jared Leto in my Best Supporting Actor nominations, like, just to see what his reaction would be when he read them. And then I was like, I can't. I can't even type it there as a joke. I can't. Yeah. Like, that would just be cruel. I don't, I don't. Um, the nominees for Best Costume Design are Cruella, Last Night in Soho, West Side Story, Spencer, and Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Oh. Uh, the nominees for Best Production Design. Gonna play your clap off stage. Um, the nominees <laughs> for Best Production Design are The Tragedy of Macbeth, The French Dispatch, West Side Story, Annette, and The Humans. Um, the nominees for best editing. So best editing, there's going to be six nominees. Same thing for yes. cinematography. Uh, because we couldn't choose. The nominees for best editing are Shiva Baby, Tick Tick Boom, Titan, The Sparks Brothers, The Worst Person in the World, and The Suicide Squad. And finally... The nominees for Best Cinematography are The Green Knight, Dune, The Tragedy of Macbeth, Spencer, West Side Story, and Nightmare Alley. And those are the so nominees. many kitty nominees. So few will yeah. win, but we're we're going to finalize the rest of our biggest categories nominees next week. So make sure you yeah. tune in because we're definitely not going to have the same nominees as the Oscars. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And that'll be post Oscars. <laughs> yeah. So, so the categories that are announced best picture, best director, <laughs> best ensemble, best actress, best actor, best supporting actress, best supporting actor, best youth performance, best voice performance, best breakout performance, best debut director, um and then uh best overlooked film um, i think one or... thing we should promise everyone trevor if, if you're uh if this is acceptable we should finalize every single category except overlooked film before the oscars are announced that way in no way does it influence any of our decisions so so you mean like the actual oscars or like the the nominees. Like the nominees, like when they when they announced the nominees, I was thinking perhaps we should finalize our nominees beforehand, even though we wouldn't tell oh, people yeah. about them until like Saturday. Yes. OK. No, I, I like that. And yeah, overlooked film, we'd have to wait until because the, the, the qualifiers for overlooked film is that it didn't get a nomination at the Oscars, the BAFTAs, um, the Critics' Choice, uh, the Golden Globes, PGA, DGA, SAG or WGA. Uh, so I need the big ones. Uh, and I'm glad that I waited because Teton got a best director nomination at the BAFTAs and it was amazing. Yep. Um, so it can't be on overlooked film anymore because it did get the recognition it deserved. And I got very, very excited about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, that though, those are the nominees. I will no MTV movie words categories, best kiss. Um, I, eh. what is the best kiss of the year? I don't know. I don't know. Hasn't been a great year for, for kissing scenes in movies. Oh, okay. No, I do actually have an answer. Um, the worst person in the world uh, when it's in the trailer, but when time freezes uh, and mm. Renata meets up with the other guy, that'd be my personal pick. I also just love that movie a lot. So, but that's where I would go personally. It's something we could at least can at least consider for next year. <laughs> Although, uh, yes, I find it a much less stimulating uh, uh, category. However, I, I see that some yes. people are interested in it, so more power to them. Yeah, best fight. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, Titan did win the Palme d'Or, but there's been plenty of films that won the Palme d'Or that were completely ignored over like the past 10 years at like the major award ceremonies. I mean, even even just like at like Sundance, BC Films, like Clemency with Alfre Woodard, The Miseducation of Cameron Post, like mm -hmm. winning a festival, like... I mean, Nanny won this year, and that's going to get absolutely nothing. So, uh, as far as awards, so also just a weird pick. I feel considering a lot of the other stuff. Regardless, um, but yeah, th those are our nominees. I will be um, 
uh, two years and they still haven't seen two people kissing wearing in 95 masks. Um, Clearly they've never but, been around uh, me and Dan. <laughs> but yeah, so I'll be, I'll be putting all these up on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me if you want. I don't really care. They're all numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, <laughs> like, if you really want A to, plus. you can, but like, <laughs> I don't know. It will make the number go one higher. Like, I just, hey, buddy. whatever. Um, but yeah, so I'll be posting the nominees up there. Um, and then I'll probably, once we announce all of them, I'll probably put together like a, a like word document or something that everybody can download and look at and see what everything is. Um, and if you guys but, want, you can, uh, make your own votes. And then when we are announcing the winners, you guys can tell us who you would have voted for. Yeah, we could set up. Okay. We're just going to spitball here. Um, we could set up like for at least the big categories, like picture director and the acting categories. We could set up like Twitter polls or like Google Forms and have audience awards. That's like, true. Pick, pick like not for all the categories, but like what uh what our audience would have would have uh, voted for off of our nominees. True. I know we can work we can workshop the idea, but that that might be yeah. something we might have audience awards because why not? You know, it's fun. Um. All right. I did mention though. We got a stream lab. Mm-hmm, Kenwood says, let's play a game, question mark. Lol, whatever. It's it's for its whatever you work. Um, I would say we're doing like good work subjectively. But I appreciate that. Um all right, Mara. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> It's the new boss, baby. I'm just going to throw it up there wherever, and it's going to be great. Because it's so stupid. Uh, <laughs> that's going in the highlight reel, that little remark right there. Oh, I'm going to turn. I'm gonna clip that out, and that's going to be something that I use in the show from now on. Like, he, like okay, I don't, I'm, I'm being, I'm being overly judgmental, but does he not look like a predator? I... <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow. Like, wow, wow, just, wow, 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 wow. I'm just being honest. <laughs> like pull up the picture again. Does he not now I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Does he not look like a predator, like a random guy you'd find that's just like, hey, like I don't know. I honestly think he looks too well put together to be a predator. Like he spent too much time on his hair and I... on his bronzer and on <laughs> his uh his spray tan, like he spent too much time on that to be thinking about preying on other people. He seems like he's just all about the the inside. I don't know. I, he, I he's, yeah. <laughs> Andrew, do not give more ideas. Oh, I could definitely I, do that. Photoshop. Ooh, I think it would be better to put the boss baby's head on Fabio. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know what? No, 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 no. I got it. I got it. I got it. We're going to keep the originals, of course. And then we're just going to do both. I'm going to put a boss baby head on Fabio's body and then Fabio's head on boss baby body. And then I'm going to put those two in the same picture together. Can, can I leave it won't be thing? gross at all. It'll be great. And they'll they'll make a little teeny tiny family. Oh God. They'll be a little like family. <laughs> just think about that little that little face with the eyebrows furrowed and raised. With those <laughs> rippling ab- abdominals and the 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 jeans and the jacket, and then I don't his like his it. flowing locks with the little baby butt and the the sock stays. Mark, this is going to be so disgusting. I'm put, excited. Why do you have to put a baby's head on the body of what looks like a child? Like, oh, uh, I don't, I don't like this. I oh, like I really this. like this. <laughs> You know what? I think I'm going to make them, and then we're going to set some donation goals for seeing them. <laughs> I, so if you want to torture Trevor, um, <laughs> please stay tuned in future episodes. Okay. I... Uh, 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 um, Why don't we do an like... AI casting <laughs> Oscar bait? Uh, since we did promise the people, and even though this is hilarious, I do want to make sure that we, uh, <laughs> that we deliver on this before we uh we start making other promises about really weird photoshops which i'm definitely (laughs) doing 
Okay. Um, first, I'd like to bring in my Twitter's at TM Talks Movies. You could probably just put in my name and it would come up. I don't know. That's yeah, <clears throat> TM Talks Movies, and then like my my name that shows up is Trevor Matson, spelled M A T T E S O N because there's a random E. Um, it always makes people say Madison. That would be very frustrating. But like, I mean. It's, it's not it's not that bad like so there's a there's a small subsect of of my extended family that pronounces this name matison and i do not understand why like there's no like there's no like silent e at the end to make the vowel say its name like that's basic phonics that like i don't know um it's also weird because like it's like you know you hear like about like different like names of like something son right uh, mm -hmm. like Robertson or something like, but, but like Matson is not common at all, but it's just Matt's son. But like, it's not common compared to a lot of the other son names. Anyways, name entomology. Um, all right. Um, I believe you mean etymology. Entomology is the study of bugs. Oh yeah. Right. It's close enough. Um, so it is. It's close <laughs> enough. You're super smart about all sorts of stuff. I never correct you on anything because you never need to be. So this is like the first time ever people in the year. So, yes. Um, all right. Are you ready? Yeah. This is, this is very specific. Okay. So this man. So, so specific. Um, so his mom dies in 1991 from, oh my God. No. Is this the Winter Soldier? Like did the Winter Soldier <laughs> kill this guy's mom? Is this Tony Stark? <laughs> <laughs> this is a backdoor Avengers Oscar bait movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Peter Geekdom so, has ruined me. His, oh, his mother's death in 1991. No, here's what I said. Oh, no. It's from a virus that spread worldwide. Uh oh. <laughs> At a beach near his house. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. This says, okay, sorry. This says, this virus spread worldwide at a beach near his house. So it's spreading worldwide, but also exclusively on this beach. Gotta start somewhere. Um, so the nurse arrives and harasses the man and his mom. Wait, no, no, they, okay. So the nurse arrives and then the man and his mom harass the nurse. And then a police officer pulls them over late at night as they're running away from the beach. And the man's wife, Anne. <laughs> okay, I don't know what the plot is. Then the, the man whose mom is dying, um, Anne, reveals that she had an affair with a guy named Tony the Pro. <laughs> sure. That's, it. that's all it gives us. So there's this man whose mom is dying from a virus that's spreading worldwide. And he's trying, he, so he harasses the nurse and then they try oh, to run God. away. And then his wife leaves him because she's having an affair with a man named Tony the Pro. Okay. So first and foremost, that's all it um, I think Tony <laughs> the Pro has to be played by Ben Affleck. And it has to be the Ben Affleck <laughs> from The Last Duel, though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, hold on let's just bring in everybody so jody comer can be the, the wife and the husband can <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah and i see who's the uh, harassed nurse who's the harassed nurse who's the harassed mm. nurse <laughs> no adam driver's the harassed nurse Oh, that would work. <laughs> and then who's the who's the mom that's dying? I was thinking Annette Benning could be an option. Okay, I like that. So we have Annette Benning as the mom, and then Matt Damon and Jody Kamara as a couple who harass uh nurse Adam Driver. Um and then they're arrested, and then Jody Kamara is secretly in a relationship with Ben Affleck, aka Tony the Pro. And this is directed. Not by Ridley Scott, but directed by Tony Scott. I knew you were going to say Tony Scott. <laughs> That's perfect. That is so perfect. <laughs> Love it. Print That's it. That's how well we know each other. That's how well we know each other. And we know which Scott we're going to talk about. 
That's right. If that isn't a, a <laughs> that's that's this when one you sounds know like a winner. You know each other. I uh, yeah, that's when you know you know you know somebody is when like you know it's you know it's Scott you're talking about. Uh, oh, mini driver as as the nurse. Oh, that would work. I still like Nurse Adam Driver. I just wanted to see Adam Driver as a nurse. I feel like it'd be a nice uh, change of pace. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I like that. I like that. No, I, I lied. You know who should be the nurse? Fabio. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fabio is just the, um, the corporeal uh, em embodiment of the virus. <laughs> no, Fabio is the car that they try. <laughs> They're just... <laughs> Oh dear. They're, they're just oh, riding dear. on Fabio's back. He's like running around like a horse and they hop on his back. We'll see what we'll see what we can work out with uh the special effects team, but I, I can't make promises. <laughs> the good news is I think that we're really going out with a bang. This was this was a good one. We are gonna make sure that we have some ready for next week also because these are becoming one of my new favorite things. <laughs> Fabio's a horsey. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, buddy? Oh, you're just busy cleaning your belly? Hi, what do you think? Oh, no, I mean, Simon has the most obvious thing. <laughs> Fabio is obviously Tony the Pro. Like, that makes the most sense. But we subvert expectations. <laughs> I just love like Matt Dame or I'm sorry, um Ben Affleck in The Last Duel is one of my absolute most favorite things I've ever seen in cinema. So see, I, I'm going to have to insist. He was nominated for a Razzie. Did you see that? That's fine. See that performance. That's fine. He, they they can do that. I don't care. I love it. it was I'm not saying it's it like weird. the highest caliber of acting. I'm just saying I love it. <laughs> he was doing something. Whether you like that something yeah. is a question. He got, I mean, he got awards consideration for it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sam is as happy as the wife. <laughs> Let's put a pin in it. Hey, bud. You don't care right, about any of this, do you, buddy? <laughs> okay, I think we, we need to be done. <laughs> Well, I want to thank everyone for showing up. Uh, uh, I want to thank everyone for also uh, just being great in the chat, like talking to us, participating. It's always fun to uh, hear your guys' two cents. Uh, next week, we're definitely going to be, I at least will be talking about Death on the Nile, depending on whether or not, if you're able to see I it, might. Trevor. I, I might, yes, hopefully. Yeah. Um, I'm doing a preview screening on Wednesday, so, uh, okay. I'm really excited. I'm like really, really, really excited. Um, <laughs> we will also continue to talk about our nominees because they'll, the rest of them will be finalized. Uh, more AI Oscar bait games, uh, possibly, uh, a letterboxed game because we haven't done a letterboxed game in a while. Yes. I should start doing yeah. this for like directors or franchises. That could be fun. Not oh, that would be game. fun. I'll put I'll put some stuff together. Yeah. Awesome. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, thanks again, everybody. So good to kind of be back into this rhythm every single week. So uh, I'm going to make sure that I do my homework on some really just mm -hmm. disgusting photoshops. And uh, <laughs> we'll see everybody next week with whatever Trevor's reaction to that is. <laughs> <laughs>